A very good looking PC has everything to catch your eyes, and when it's built with a powerful system, it gets me excited. I got to sit down with Hans Petter, although known as Pope, the highly respected case modder from Denmark. Hans Petter has been modding PC for more than a decade, and he recently won the DreamHack Case Mod Championship 2017 with Benchy Mac Benchface. Today I chat with Hans Peter about how he gets to create some of the best looking PC in the world. My name is Isai, aka Truthman from the Open Benchtable Project, and this is the OBT Podcast. Thank you, Hans Peter, for joining us in this podcast and share your story. Let's start with a little bit of yourself and the journey towards your modding hobby. It's a long story. I think it started about 11 years ago. I, I got my first beach um, PC with some really old components and decided that I didn't really like the outside look of the case so I tore off one of the side panels and just went to town with it with a with a drill and a hammer and some mesh that I cut out from an old um, trash can and I put on some uh, some 80 millimeters LED fans in orange and that was basically how I how I started, um, and from there on, everything just escalated. Here we are now, and you're well respected face in the modding industry. Would you consider that it was a uh, more than like a full time job, or something more that you learn and do on the side? It was only something that I uh, was doing on the side. Um, when I started, I was in what you guys would probably call ele- elementary school. Um, and then when I got to uh, to high school, I I started out doing a bit more advanced stuff. With um, um, I really got myself into CAD drawings, um, liked drawing things up in 3D and trying to get them machined, laser cutting and stuff. So from from um, from high school and then on to university, I I really taught myself like a lot of different ways to to draw stuff and manufacture them. So if I get this correctly, you do manufacture all your stuff by yourself, like you have a CNC and laser engraving access? Um, I started out by doing so. Um, we had a CNC and a laser cutter at my, um, at my university. So from there, I, I learned how to program the CNC to do the code for it, put the material in, and, and basically I did everything myself back then. Um, at, at, in, in these times where I don't have access to a, a CNC machine, I have uh, friends who um, who work at machine shops that can lend me some or do the actual machining myself. That's cool. So you do all the CAD drawings for everything you do, and then you can send that for out for production. Yeah, exactly. So, but everything I have this philosophy that everything that I can do myself in a case mod, I will do myself. Let's focus on your mod based on the open bench table, because that's what this podcast is all about. Uh, what is the creative process you follow to do that kind of mod? All of my mods starts out with basically one component. Um, some of them starts out with a motherboard that I want to do some builds around. Other of them starts out with a water cooling system. Um, and for this one, I just fell in love with the uh, with the design of the open bench table. Um, I'm a huge sucker for well-designed uh, CNC machined or just generally well fabricated parts so it just it just was something that i knew i needed to have my hands on so i um i got you guys to to actually send me one just to to see if if it was something that i wanted to to try and build in um, and i in the beginning i just wanted to do a simple build with some sleeving and a simple water cooling system but as my case mods tends to do from time to time everything just escalated and here i am yeah, rather, rather quickly and complex <laughs> yes exactly because i have i'm not very good at restraining myself when i first get into this kind of things the ideas just start rolling um so i i tried out um yeah, I, I I just decided that I wanted to do something huge with um, with distro plates and water cooling and a lot of cabling, while still keeping it as an actual bench table. I didn't want it to go too far away from the original design idea. Yeah, it all become rather quickly and complex very fast. Yes, exactly. I wanted to to also because one of the challenges of doing a build like this is there is there's no shroud to hide stuff behind. You can't just take all of your ugly wires and put them behind a motherboard tray and say look what i built um 
doing this actual build, like everything can be seen. If you you can look even under the motherboard, so so there is no places to hide anything. Is this the reason why this mod is all open and accessible? Yeah, like I I always try not to to just shove everything into a component on the rear side of a case and just say so that for example half of the case is good looking and the other half is like in an ugly bird nest. Um, but for this one, it was especially challenging because like there is n nothing that is not visible all of the time. Like if you look at it from the front and you just look like a tiny bit down, you'll see the PSU, and if you look a bit up, you'll see the rest of the components. So it's just that open. Yeah, you cannot mess up on the wiring for that. No, no, no. I had um, I had a few wires that was, I think they were five millimeters too long. So I ended up just tearing them out and just redoing it because they just look silly when installed. Um, there was very little. It was, it was very unforgiven to to try and make. Well, the outcome is pretty impressive. Good job on that. So the mod is called Benchy Mac Benchface, but where does the name come from? Normally, when I do a case mod, I try to find out some super serious name um, that that like flies really well with the progress um, with the actual mod. For this one, I I don't know. I, I guess I just got tired of trying to to be super serious about it all the time. So I remembered back to when uh, when the internet was supposed to do a vote on what a Our uh, Antarctic exploration boat was going to be called, and that was going to be called Bodie McBoatface. So, I I basically just got the inspiration from there, and I thought that benching McBenchface was uh, was kind of catchy. It is catchy indeed. That that's very nice to hear the the story behind it. Actually, I love it. Uh, you talk about the distribution plate for the water cooling. So the one you made for Benchy Mac Benchface, that's one of the biggest distro plate I have ever seen outside of a case. Uh, How do you accommodate like the, the CPU, uh, the VGA, dual pumps, you even get a quick release uh, underneath and so on. But I wonder, how do you manage to pull that in all the same complex setup? Yes, it was a nightmare. Um, the entire plate is, um, it's a bit hard to explain, but normal when you make distribution, distribution plate, you will just have two flat plates that is um, screwed together. For this one, I needed to have uh, one plate that was um, 10 millimeters in one side and then 18 millimeters in the other side to fit the pumps in. So it, it, it had to, uh, to have two levels and to, to design that, to machine that and to polish it up was just a super nightmare. You can see it if you look in the, uh, in the front of the case mod, you'll see where the pumps are right behind those the acrylic plate the pumps is attached to actually um, gets thinner so there's a kind of a uh, of a recess there and well and, and and beyond that it was just like they they're just so massive like both plates has been milled out from from solid 25 millimeter acrylic uh, blocks and so much material has been taken off During the process of building your mods, you were posting pictures on your Facebook page, uh, and it's impressive to to see what you can do with a block of raw materials and, and ending up with like a glass-looking result for the distro blade. How many times did you have to polish it to get this look? Um, yeah, polishing is is super time kind of consuming, and it's also why you'll see that a lot of the guys who dust these plates uh, end up not polishing them because it just takes so much time. For this one, I had to, first for each of the blocks, I had to sand it down, starting from grid 400, then moving on to uh, 800, 1000, 1500, 2000, and 2500. So both of the uh, huge acrylic pieces had to be sanded with that, which probably took like 10 hours or something. I like guess stupid amount of hours. And after the sanding, I would polish it first with a, uh, a rough polisher and then a medium polisher and then a finisher. So the entire polishing process was, it just took so much time. There are so much special bezels and corners and things that must have been very difficult to get perfect. Yes, exactly. Um, and there are so many, um, it's called chamfers on these um, like edges all around. So it, it's not just a, a square piece of, uh, of acrylic. There is uh, tiny details all over the place. 
the result is for sure impressive. D did it happen to you that you broke a distribution plate uh, in the past while publishing it or you had to start all over again for the same concept? Um, no, not while polishing. Um, while machining, yes, um, stuff broke. One of the um, one of the main acrylic plates for this one actually did break while machining it. So I had to uh, to redo that one, which was a bummer because uh, material like that is actually rather expensive. So it uh, that sucked a bit, but yeah, such is life. You you learn from your mistakes. There was some comment online about the, the mod regarding the cooling operation. I think I saw that on, on Reddit at some point. So with the distribution plate connected to the CPU and the graphic cards, but we don't see any radiators, no reservoir or anything on the mod. That is one of the uh, the super funny things about this build and also stuff that I get a lot of questions about. Um, a, there's no uh, radiators. B, there is no reservoirs. Um, the radiators is a funny story because I can actually run this build without radiators. Um, and I can actually also run it without a reservoir if I just connect the... Um, on the side of the build, there is two quick disconnect fittings. And the main idea when building this was that those quick disconnect fittings would go to a radiator station that I have here at home. Um, it's not very pretty, but it's super functional. So that thing uh, would cool the entire build. So when I went to, uh, to DreamHack, I forgot a radiator. So I, I was supposed to bring a radiator so that the build could be running uh, games up there, but I only uh, remembered to, uh, to bring the reservoir. So, So while setting it up, I, f I was like fanatically looking around, asking people if they had a spare radiator, but no one had anyway, anyone. So I thought, okay, I have two ASUS 1080Ti Poseidon card cards on here. These are hybrid cards, which means they have a, uh, a water block and they have fans on them. So my theory was that if I just disable SLI, so I only ran the system with one graphic card, maybe these two graphic cards could act as radiators and dissipate all of the heat. And it worked. Like the um, the fluid never got above 40 de de degrees while playing Battlefield 1. And that is with a 16-core Threadripper CPU and a 1080 Ti just smashing out heat. Yeah, that's quite crazy. Yeah, so so these two graphic cards actually managed to to keep the entire system cold for an entire weekend while playing Battlefield on it like 16 hours a day. That is definitely an interesting way to look at it. You, you went on to that extent because you had to run games on the rig to participate in the modding competition. Um, it was because I had to have it at the uh, at the ASUS booth to uh, to be on display there. So and it's so we hooked it up to uh, to an X 34 inch uh, ultra wide monitor, and so it could just uh, people could play Battlefield and games on it there. Well, as it's your daily PC now, you have like a double 1080 Ti and Threadripper. I guess you can use the extra radiator and uh, and extra reservoir as well. One of the rules in the competition is that you have to have a functioning PC. Um, in other competitions around the world, you'll see guys just putting a motherboard into, I don't know, a huge metal bucket and then say that that is a motherboard. But, but for, um, for DreamHack, you actually have to have a functioning PC for it to be accepted. So, but, but, this, uh, but that is a second story. It, um, it was only because I have to have it on display at the, at the booth that I wanted to, to really show that this is not just something that is here for fun. It can actually work and it's going to be my ma main daily driver. Well, as it's your daily PC now, you have like a double 1080 Ti and Threadripper. I guess you can use the extra radiator and, uh, and extra reservoir as well. Yeah, exactly. Um, right now, they are actually just sitting loose because um, I'm in the middle of moving. So I'm in the middle of, um, of building another external radiator um, in the same design as, the, uh, as a distro plate of the one that is on Benji here. Interesting. We're looking forward to see the result for that. So speaking of the distribution plate again, you used some special uh, joint. Uh, was that made custom to the length or you had a few tricks up your sleeves to ensure this is like tightly sealed? Um, the O-ring is a funny thing. So all um, like most of the stuff people ask about is the O-rings, like how do you join it together? How do you make sure it doesn't leak? Um, which O-rings to use and stuff. And there's two ways of going about this. You can either take some O-ring string and then uh, cut it and then glue it together, or you can get O-rings in specific length. Um, 
which is what I do because it's a bit safer and there is um, there's absolutely no chance of it leaking when you don't have like a glued seal somewhere. So what I do is that I start out by de designing my parts and then I check if everything fits and and when I'm in the final stages of the design I check if I can uh, if I can get o-rings in those actual length and if I cannot I'll adjust the design to to accommodate so that it fits the available sizes online. So you think about that right from the design phase you don't have to adjust afterwards. Yeah, exactly. So I am um, I test out like I I do the general de design of the o-ring channels to make it so that it it looks like I want to have it uh, looking and then I test if there's anything that fits this. And normally it's only within a few millimeters that I have to uh, correct it. In terms of uh, pressure testing, I saw on one of your Facebook updates as well that you had a pressure gauge uh, things to test for leaks or that was just for the rigidity of the distribution plate. Um, both actually. Um, when you do distro plates like this, uh, it's it's very cumbersome to to put fluid in it, uh, figure out there's a leak, having to take everything apart. What I do is that I just test with air instead to um, because if there is a leak, then I don't have to clean up the huge mess that is fluid all over. So I, I test it by um, by pressurizing into it. Um, I think my pr tester goes up to half a bar. And then if anything is going to break or if anything is going to leak, it's going to be doing it um, at that point. So I don't have to worry about fluid going like all over the place. And I'm also completely sure that this thing will last a lifetime because no water cooling system is going to, to, to get to that kind of pressure. So do you leave that overnight and then check if there's like variation in the pressure? Um, there, is a, there is a pressure gorge um, on, on there. So... I can see if it drops in uh, in pressure overnight. That's a very good way to not mess up your hardware and make sure everything works well. Yes, and it, it actually blows my mind that fewer people are are, are, are are using these because it's such a clever way to to avoid seeing if you like have forgotten to screw in a plug somewhere. And the moment you start testing with fluid, you're just you're basically just betting your entire life earning or saving that you just put into your PC that you didn't mess up. Yeah, and there's no insurance for like, oops, I forgot to test, sorry. <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> uh, at least you have to have a very good insurance for that. Let's talk a little bit about cable management because I remember back when you worked on this Benchimac Benchface, you posted an update and say, yeah, I'm training the cables, I'm training the cables, and I have this special cable comp uh, to do that. How is this important for the final result? Yeah, these cables are made for these components. Um, cable management is, is one of my my big loves or how you would uh, say it. I, I, I really enjoyed doing my own cables and like making them completely custom to length so that they're just like in there and, and looking great. But that's also, that also comes with the downside that you have to spend an absurd amount of time on it. Um, these, uh, these cable combs that I, I, I designed the cable comb so that there was a bit of guidance for the cables. Also, because if they're just loose um, when transporting it, when it's all open, they will just flap all around the places. How do you actually plan to do your cables uh, with the cable combs that are not removable? The way I do my cables is that I finish up the end that goes into the components first. For example, the end that goes into the graphic cards. And then I just make the cables like 10 centimeters um, longer than I've measured them out to be. So I route them all the way around into the uh, power supply and then I cut them off to length in the actual power supply. So they actually get the exact length that they need to be going from the components and down. So once I've done the cable management, um, there is no easy way to just take out the cables off the, off the build. So that means this build has to stay like this for a very long time now. Yes. For example, with this one, um, the connectors on the ASUS cards is, um, is flipped compared to normal graphic cards. So if I wanted to take out these two graphic cards and put in, let's say, uh, stock 1080 Ti Founders Edition, the cables would no longer fit. That is one of the downsides of doing it this way because it doesn't, it doesn't get particularly modular. So, 
and for example with the with the motherboard as well the um the eight pin what's it called eps connectors is in a really weird location for this motherboard so if i were to plug another motherboard into this uh, system i probably have to redo a lot of the cables damn well let's say that the system you have with threadripper and the dual 1080 ti is good for quite some times now yeah this should last me at least another couple of months the silly thing is that the only game that i play at the moment is PUBG, and that doesn't utilize sli at all so so one of the graphic cards is basically just there to look good yeah saying that it will make a few enemies with the price of graphic cards recently as you mentioned earlier you can always use the second card as a radiator anyway yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, actually, right now I only have a, a two eighty millimeter radiator that's hooked up to the entire thing, um, and it's surprisingly, it's surprisingly cool for such a low amount of radiator space. I remember as well. You had to cut out one of the M.2 Ed Spreader as well. Uh, how did that happen? That was a uh, that was a strange little operation because I wanted to uh, to put two of the EK um, M.2 heat sinks on the M.2 drives because I know that they get quite hot. Um, but when I put those on and I put it on the um, on the riser card for the motherboard. I was hitting some uh, some small components on the riser card, so I had to take like one of my saws and then cut off a chunk of the heatsink. And miraculously, it still works. Like on one of the M.2 drives, there is one of the temperature sensors that it's constantly registering 84 degrees, um, even though it has just been plugged in. So I think that I broke something, but other than that, they work perfectly. With this mod, Benchy Mac Benchface, you won the DreamHack Case Mode Championship at DreamHack Winter 2017. How was the journey towards the convention? Was that something you intended to do and participate, or you just entered the competition last minute? Um, uh, DreamHack was uh, was like I had thought to uh, to join DreamHack, but I was not sure that I was going to be making it, or um, like or being able to to make it. But um, like in the in the last week up until DreamHack. I assembled the distro plate. I made all of the cables um, and did all of the final assembly of the build. So I did not sleep for four days. And then I slept all the way up there in the car while my uh, my, my buddy, he, uh, he drove. So it was tight, but, um, but I made it. You entered the commission with a rather unique take on the approach for sure. How was the competition spirit with the other contestant? The competition of, um, in in DreamHack is also is always uh, is always really tough. Um, there's a lot of Swedish guys there, and I don't know why, but compared to the Danish mudding scene, the Swedish scene is just so much bigger, and there's so many more skilled guys up there. So I um, I actually did not really post anything. Were any pictures with the distro plate? I just posted the uh, the final pictures of all the sleeving and the components on the actual test bench, um, in hopes of of tricking the guys up there to to think that that was all that I brought. Then you show up at the competition displaying the complete mod with the full distro plate out of the blue. Yeah, surprise. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I um I like to believe that that took them by surprise up there because they've only seen the pictures with the um, with the cables in place. So in my, in my mind, they, they saw it and they thought, hey, we can easily beat that. And then, and then they put on the main part. During all your career at the motors, uh, is that the first time you do play with the full open air system? I haven't really seen that many open air system. I think that the ones that I've seen has been recently with uh, with Inwin making their new cases. Um, a lot of them are open air, but like having an open air case is just it's a bit of a uh, of what you call it a gamble, um, especially at events because like people can just go in there and just take your rams out um and i had one guy at uh, at dreamhack who went up to the case and just put his finger on the ram block and just started wiggling it back and forth until the system rebooted oh and my then God. he and then he just shrugged his shoulders and then he he walked off and now he, like what are you doing so i um i think that a lot of people are also because it's it's untraditional so i think that's the reason why we don't see a lot of these kind of builds 
you were nominated as well for the BitTech mode of the year in 2017, another well-recognized modding contest in Europe. Do you usually submit all your mods to competitions? Uh, no, um, there is there's a bunch of uh, of case mods that I actually never even got like on with posting pictures of, like work in progress pictures, because sometimes you're just so busy building these things that the whole documenting and taking pictures thing can just be too time con con consuming. And it's the same thing with um, with joining all the casemate competitions because you have to, at most of them, you have to have a, a large work lock. Most of the other ones you have to, to write in and nominate yourself and fill out a huge questionnaire. So it's, um, I did that like a few years back, um, but, but right now I, I, I simply do not have the time for it. You recently got the open bench table mini version as well. Maybe there will be something coming up? Maybe it's um yeah I'm in the planning stages for it. Um, my planning stages normally take like half a year if not more. So don't expect anything like soon. Well, as of now, we still don't know what it will look like at this point anyway. Yeah, that's uh that's how I I normally do um do sponsorships and build and stuff. Like I I write people and I say that uh, I have an idea. It's going to be insane. Um, I need these parts. Are you interested? And then, yeah, we're interested. Can you show us some renders? I can't show you renders because I haven't started designing it yet. I just have an idea. Fantastic. This has been an interesting discussion with you, Pope. Uh, thank you for your time and sharing your story about Benchy Mac Benchface. We hope to talk to you again very soon. You're welcome. And thanks for your time. Don't forget to check out the website openbenchtable.com for more content and to get your Open Bench Table and Open Bench Table Mini today available in silver, black and red shipping worldwide. I'm Truthman, signing off.